Hey guys, my name is Alex and I'm here to talk to you about hereditary channelopathies. So let's not waste any time and let's dive in. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify classic presenting features for each syndrome, including family history and patient demographics. Describe the basic underlying pathophysiology and treatment for each disorder. Recognize the key features found on EKG in Brigada syndrome and congenital long QT syndrome. And recognize the ventricular tachyarrhythmias associated with these syndromes on EKG. The hereditary channelopathies that are relevant for step one are Brugada syndrome and congenital long QT syndrome. Clinically, it's important to recognize that these are two of the most common causes of sudden cardiac death in patients with apparently normal hearts. Only about 5 to 10 percent of cases of sudden cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death occur in patients with structurally normal hearts. Most of the time, SCA and SCD occur in patients with heart disease, most commonly coronary artery disease, which is responsible for about 70% of all cases of sudden cardiac death. So anyway, let's begin our discussion on Brugada syndrome. Brugada syndrome is a conductive heart defect most commonly due to a loss of function mutation of sodium ion channels in cardiac myocytes. It's autosomal dominant, which will manifest on test questions as a patient with a family history, often a strong family history, of sudden cardiac death. It is most commonly seen in male patients and patients of Asian descent, so on test questions, look for an Asian male. Patients typically present in adulthood, in their 20s to 60s, while many patients may initially present with syncopal episodes, thus allowing for early diagnosis and intervention. Up to one-third of patients will initially present in sudden cardiac arrest. If this disorder is not caught early, it can lead to sudden cardiac death. If you do catch Brugada syndrome early, you can prevent life-threatening ventricular tachyarrhythmias and ultimately death with an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or an ICD. Brugada syndrome is characterized by a very classic EKG pattern of a pseudo-right bundle branch block with ST segment elevations in V1 and V2. Recall the classic RSR prime pattern seen in lead V1 during a typical right bundle branch block. This rabbit ears or M-shaped pattern is also observed in Brugada syndrome, hence why it's called a pseudo-right bundle branch block. Note the accompanying elevated ST segment here, which slopes down into an inverted T wave. Okay, that's essentially all you need to know about Brugada syndrome. Just look for an adult Asian male with a strong family history of sudden cardiac death. He may or may not present with a syncopal episode or just unexplainable V-fib or VTAC. If they give you this history and then an EKG pattern like this, be able to recognize V-fib and polymorphic VTAC. And you'll have this question in the bag. Next, let's talk about congenital long QT syndromes, both of which are caused by a loss of function mutation of potassium ion channels in cardiac myocytes. The two conditions that you need to know are Romano Ward syndrome and Dravel and Lang Nielsen syndrome. To refresh your memory, the QT interval is the duration between the beginning of the Q wave and the end of the T wave. It represents ventricular depolarization and repolarization. That is, the QT interval corresponds to the time when the ventricles start to contract to the time when they finish relaxing. A normal QT interval is less than 420 milliseconds in duration. So for each large 200 milliseconds, a normal QT interval typically won't exceed two large boxes. As you can see in this example, the QT interval is quite prolonged, spanning almost four large boxes. Ultimately, just as drugs that block potassium channels can prolong the QT interval and increase the risk for torsade state point, congenitally dysfunctional potassium channels can act in the same way. When potassium channels can't function, ventricular repolarization is prolonged increasing the risk of torsades and ultimately sudden cardiac death. The two types of congenital long QT syndrome, as I mentioned, are Romano Ward syndrome and Dravel and Lang Nielsen syndrome. Romano Ward is autosomal dominant, so just like in Brigada, patients will have a very positive family history of sudden cardiac death, at least in question stems. Romano Ward is the pure cardiac phenotype, so only the heart is involved. Patients can present with a history of multiple syncopal episodes or seizures, or they can present in sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death. Romano Ward's diagnosed by positive family history of sudden cardiac death and a prolonged QT interval on EKG. The mainstay of treatment for congenital long QT syndrome is beta blockers. Remember that. An ICD can be implanted in patients who do not respond adequately to beta blockers, though. Dravel and Lang Nielsen syndrome is an autosomal recessive disease that causes long QT syndrome, and it also causes congenital severe bilateral sensory neural deafness. 
I always remember Jervell and Lang Nielsen syndrome involves the heart and the ears. The one with two names involves two body parts. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. These babies are born completely deaf in both ears, and that alone can be a pretty big clue that you can pick up on in question sims. There may be a family history of sudden cardiac death, but remember, because it's recessive, there really doesn't have to be. What is important, though, is that these patients will often present with cardiac events in early childhood, as opposed to adulthood, as we talked about before. So the basic schema for this disease is a congenitally deaf young child who presents with thinkable episodes or in sudden cardiac arrest. When you see this, order an EKG, which will again show either a long QT interval or they're going to be in torsades. Genetic testing for loss of function potassium shell mutations can confirm the diagnosis in these patients. Again, beta blockers are the first line treatment for both congenital long QT syndromes, and the preferred, the most preferred beta blockers are propranolol and natalol. If this doesn't work, again, you may need to move to an ICD. All right, guys, quiz time. I'm doing things a little differently with this flash quiz because as I was making a summary table to put at the end of the lecture, I was reminded of how much more you get out of tables when you fill them out yourselves. So I thought it would be way more beneficial for you guys if I gave you the flash quiz in table format instead. Pause the video and just see how much you can mentally fill in. Alright guys, nice work. I'm not going to waste your time reading through this entire table because it's what we just went through. And we're about to summarize it in the bottom lines. But feel free to pause again and make sure that you got everything down if you're a table learner like me. Okay, guys and gals, now it's time to sum it all up. Brugada syndrome is an adult male patient of Asian descent, positive family history of sudden cardiac death, who presents with syncopal episodes or in sudden cardiac arrest or with sudden cardiac death. Congenital long QT syndrome will present with syncopal episodes or seizures, and they'll also present with sudden cardiac death or arrest. And remember, in JLNS, you'll have a congenitally deaf young child with a positive family history of sudden cardiac death. Brugada syndrome is caused by an autosomal dominant mutation in cardiac mass site sodium channels, responsible for the initial upstroke of the action potential. Congenital long QT syndrome is caused by potassium channel mutations which prolong ventricular repolarization, thus increasing the QT interval duration. On EKG, in Brugada syndrome, you'll see a pseudo-right bundle branch rock and SC elevations in V1 and V2. Congenital long QT syndrome, the EKG shows a prolonged QTC usually larger than three large squares and greater than 450 milliseconds, as a general rule. And Brugada syndrome can lead to V-fib or polymorphic V-tac, while congenital long QT syndrome, or anything else that causes a prolonged QT interval, can specifically lead to torsades. Okay guys, that's all you'll ever want to or need to know about the hereditary channelopathies, at least for now. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to give me a like down below. Thanks so much guys for watching. See you next time.